A fear, akin to nausea, was rushing in up to my throat. I frantically tried to crush my fear underneath my teeth, and walked faster towards the hotel. My fast walk soon became a trot, and then I suddenly run at full speed. When I arrived at the Royal Central Hotel, I was out of breath. When it came out years ago, I was only hesitating, and four years ago, I could only sell myself short. In this moment, I couldn't spare a single thought for a hotel's prestige or its or majestic appearance. Panting, I got to the elevator and headed towards the Royal Suite. I was still nervous, and above all, my anxiety would not go away. Hagana was all I could think about. I could not forget a profile which looked like she'd lost interest in everything, to a point that it hit you with a feeling of resignation. And if Hagana had really predicted what come on the surface while being in the middle of it? I could not help but make associations I did not like. I also felt that if I fought like this, I would be able to understand Hagana's mysterious words. Something like Bottom's objective was aligned with hers, but she did not care about Emerald Industries or anything that went along with it. They were going in the same direction, but their final destination was different. I didn't understand that. However, I felt like I finally could. In fact, it was a very natural and even logical answer. They were going in the same direction, but their final destinations were different. Which meant the big difference was the distance they each had to cover. And how would you express the fact that Hagana helped Barton using Wallace's words? A chicken race. In a chicken race, what happened when someone miscalculated the distance left? He fell off the edge of a cliff, right into hell. I was right in front of room 5002. Now I'm actually sitting outside of this room. This room was on the top floor of the hotel where I had almost lost everything eight years earlier. It was also a place which gave me the opportunity to find myself again four years ago. The whole time I kept on thinking about Hagana. It even felt like four years ago I was even acting on the basis of what she would think of me. However, the reason I was able to move forward towards my goals was surely not my own strength, but not even my own guts. The only thing that kept me together when I was bending, breaking, and even now was on the verge of shattering into pieces was the support of Eleanor, Chris, and Risa. But with that, I wouldn't be where I am now. In that case, I was really lucky. It was almost a miracle. I also had to think that way. How must it, how must it have been for Hagana? It was all alone that time. Her face looking like she lost interest in everything. And the ticket that she gave Risa. She was predicting when Luna's surfaces crumble. No, Agana. Maybe Agana came here precisely to make the Luna's surface fall. By pretending to help Barton, she kept accumulating losses so huge in Emerald Industries. She would not be able to cover them. And she would mess up the Luna's surface, which she probably thought was good enough for nothing. The lunar surface was held up solely for economy, therefore, only through its economy could you destroy it. Hagana had seen through this vulnerability. With her dark eyes, which saw through a symbolical word of her numbers, she calmly found, found a switch. I don't think she is trying to destroy the moon. I can't help but feel she's trying to help Hal. Again, that's probably just romantic in me talking, but... This is Hasakuri we're talking about. He really knows his in-depth stories and that's probably how his plan from right from the start. The switch would turn light on a lunar surface off. I held a keycard up to a door. I'd acquire this keycard in exchange for a huge amount of profits. It was worth 30, maybe 40 billion mores, but I didn't know any more. In the instance, I felt like it had extremely strong symbolic meaning. And if Agana was really trying to destroy the lunar surface, I was the one responsible for it. I had to see my own eyes, but that hand would let go of was grasping with depths of despair. I had to see my own eyes as a consequence of my actions, and the price I had to pay for this was a profit of my dreams, which I'd been chasing all this time. I had to let go of my dreams and face reality. Not as a cocky investor who was called a hero of the lunar service, but as a real Yoshiharu Kawaura, a guy who knew nothing of a reality eight years ago, and seriously believed he could make any dream come true with just a laptop. I was put my key into a lock of a door leading to eight years ago. And what do I find? I'd open the door of a genuine time machine. I 
Of an house island hotel room made it feel like I was just picking up where I left off at the church before. Standing in front of a door to a main bedroom, I bore my right hand into a fist and prepared to knock. But as I raised the shoulder halt, it hesitated against my will. Don't hesitate! I screamed my heart and mustering all my strength, I knocked on the door. Pouring out my feelings, I prayed I could cross over space and time, I called out her name. Hagana! As that word passed through my throat, I felt like it had been eight years since I uttered it. In truth, it really had, a, it had been eight years since I called out his name to stop somewhere in their tracks. For those eight years, this name was merely an, an epithet for someone who was un, unreachable in my past. But now in this instant, I was calling out the name of Hagana who I'd even seen in my dreams. That's why, even if there was no answer, I would not falter anymore. Hagana, I know you're in there. My voice was absorbed by the room's soundproof floor and walls. I clenched my fist and knocked on the door. Hagana, I have to talk to you. Then, driven by momentum, I put my hand on the doorknob. It felt almost anticlimactic as I turned it on my hand. The door was unlocked. After thinking for a mere instant, I boldly opened the door. In that moment, it generally seemed like I'd been sent through back into the past. The inside of my main bedroom was dark. Hagana? Can't see her in here. The blackout curtains were completely closed. The bedroom was so dark you couldn't think it was still daytime. As I took a step inside, I had yet more vivid mem mem reminders of a church eight years ago. It was the centre of a room with Hagana's fragrance, which hadn't changed since back then. Hagana! I called out her name. This time I was not calling out the darkness, not knowing where anyone was there. I was calling out to her with a full knowledge she was a bit there. She got a bottle of Quantro. Her gunner was sitting on the side of her bed, a laptop open on her knees. She was staring at a screen with motionless eyes, occasionally manipulating a touchscreen. Next to her was a bottle of expensive looking wine and a glass. Bloody hell, it is Quantro. It had been eight years since then. I was aware that. I hadn't changed at all in eight years, but this might not be the same case for Hagana. Hagana! I called out her name once more, but she didn't respond. Did she not hear me? Right after thinking that. What? There was no rejection or disgust, not even concern. I was about to recall from a mechanical sounding word, but I spoke the very next instant. I want to ask you about something. I want to ask you something. She was silent, kept gazing at the screen of the laptop. Nearly without blinking. Why was Barton so relentless about buying Emerald Industries? I don't know. After having answered, Hagana lightly pushed a key. Then why did you help Barton? There was a pause. Hagana, I have no reason to tell you. Rejection. I took a deep breath and went on. You have a reason. And then. There was an error in the upper left-hand corner. In this dark room where curtains poured, lit only by a dim light from the laptop screen. The darkness was all more cute, and yet Hagana's eyes stood out even darker than the rest of the room. What you were doing might cause the lunar surface to collapse. Hagana showed no reaction to these words and turned her gaze back towards the screen. I kept on undeterred. Both stairs were about to go bankrupt. I managed to overcome that crisis somehow. But right now, Howard Brothers is staggering. And if, and if amidst all this, anyone in the reported a huge loss, and ended up being at risk of collapsing, that would sign a death warrant on the lunar surface. Oh. She spoke this word in a low voice, her gaze still fixed on the screen while she was working on something. I still clung on. Right now, we're acting to protect the lunar surface from a light -like collapse. The situation has been developing too fast and there's only one, only so much we can do on our own. So we don't now have a time to observe how Barton's chicken race plays itself out. If it really did happen, we would have no way to save the lunar surface. Hagana, you must know why Barton in is so intent on going after him or didn't she's right? Now please tell me. She was still staring at the screen, 
Without changing her expression in the slightest, she said this. What would you do if I told you? Well, I'm going to save a lunar surface. I yelled without realising. Even so, her garden did not react at all. No matter how apathetic they may be, humans have something called spinal reflex. When they heard a loud noise out of the blue, their body reacts, whether or not they wanted to or not. But Hagana did not move. She looked like an actual life size doll. Hagana. So I heard you gave an orbital elevator ticket to Risa. You're thinking of a lunar surface might actually just collapse, aren't you? No. You. I continued speaking, struggling my hardest to keep myself from raising my voice. Aren't you actually trying to cause a lunar surface to collapse? She was silent. She neither refuted nor acknowledged. She was just toying with her laptop on knees. Hagana! I reached out for a laptop. Even when I took a laptop away, Hagana didn't resist. As I looked at the screen, I shuddered. It wasn't like there was anything inappropriate on the screen, nor was it anything in horror movies where you just think someone writing a novel was writing help me. Even so, I shuddered. What Hagana was working on was Solitaire, as in the card game. That, that image is hard to bear. To think Hagana was killing time with a game in a situation like this, I had a terrifying feeling that something was wrong with her. I called out her name as if to stop someone from going away. Agana without her computer, just staring blankly into a void. She seemed out of it, as if she'd given up on everything. Agana. I crouched and extended my hand towards her shoulder. Only then did Agana react promptly, quickly rejecting my hand. Don't touch me. Agana, but don't come any closer. Hysterical voice, just like eight years ago. Agana was staring into a void, not straying from it at all. If I just looked even worse to me, I just felt compelled to call out for someone to help. You feigned offering advice to Emerald Industries. You accumulated huge amounts of, of financial products that you knew would collapse. That much was in line with Barton's plan. We ended up invo involving insanely huge amounts of money, am I right? Why'd you do that? As you are right now, it's like... It's like she's trying to die with a lunar surface. I didn't voice these words out loud. But I could tell her Hagana knew what words I was holding back. Because she was looking at me. It doesn't matter what I do. It's none of your business. She didn't even call me by name. It is so. I yelled because my emotions were getting better than me. I was at a loss of words at that moment. But, all, but I could still say this. It's my business too. How so? There's no emotion in the eyes as she gazed at me. That's why a question struck me like a knife straight to the heart. How is it your business? <laughs> Some other words would not come out. Words I tried my hardest to muster all turned out prophetic. Are you really asking me that? In this instant, for some reason, I felt like Hagana's presence had grown into darkness. How is it your business? After Hagana asked me this once more, I finally spoke. I want to protect the lunar surface. I don't think so. They kind of inadverted her eyes as if saying the discussion was over. But I grabbed her shoulders. She tried to push away my arms. Do you really understand what you're doing? You're about, you're about to destroy the lunar surface. Thousands of people. Hundreds of thousands of people's lives. And the dreams and hopes these people have been chasing after. Tending to struggle. The glasses were pushed over and the laptop got thrown aside. The lunar surface has new dreams or hopes. She finally spoke those words. Nothing. Such things don't exist. I've never seen such things. I've only seen people suffering. I've not seen such a single good thing on the lunar surface. So it should just be gone. She tried to free her wrist from my grasp. The usual, diff usual difference in strength between man and a woman has flipped here. Since one of us was raised on the earth from your one born on the moon, I was about to be shaken off, but I did my best to hang on. Even so, even so, you were going to wipe out lunar surface for this reason? Yes.
No matter how crazy she gets, the eyes are still beautiful. They always have been beautiful. It should just disappear. The sight of her eyes gazing at me took my breath away. Her eyes were not ap apathetic anymore. In those eyes, I could feel clear hatred directed at me. Am I the cause? She gave no reply to these words, but her eyes were more than eloquent in that regard. I'm really sorry about what happened then. I always wished I could do it over again, do it right, if that were ever possible. Even when my emotions were boiling deep in my heart, I could not find a word to express them. What was this frustration? Finally, I mustered my word and spoke. I never stopped thinking about you for the last eight years. Liar. Hagana replied with one word, one single word, so extremely short, so sharp. Do you think I'm going to believe that lie? It's not a lie. I said this on the verge of tears. It wasn't a lie. For the last eight years, Hagana had been in the centre of my thoughts. The wound I felt from my disbelief who ever shattered my desire to, for her to know the truth. She was looking at me with eyes filled with hatred. So it really wasn't possible to fix this mistake from eight years ago. I did... I did something worthy of her hatred. Obviously you'd end up hating me, but I always wanted to apologise. I wanted to apologise and do it over. I thought about it constantly for the eight, last eight years. That's why, in case you ever came back one day, I was always thinking about what to do to get you to forgive me, and I always acted in order to get better myself. I've been working my hardest for that goal. I was on the verge of tears, mustering all, my, all I could do to save this, as my voice grew hoarse. The gunner was glaring at me with eyes filled with hatred. Out of blue, her eyes fill, still, still full of hatred. A tear fell from a corner of her eye and rolled down her cheek. You made her cry. And now for the episode here.